Hey over there, Joe Lunchbox. And Joy Nightingale. And today we have landed right here on Greenport on Long Island in New York. Mm -hmm. Now, when I think of America and think of it being built, I think of the railroad system. We were able to get out west and explore from the railroad. So we are at the Long Island Railroad Museum today. Mm -hmm. We're going to bring you along with us as we check it out, see what it's about. So if you like this kind of thing, you should like this video, subscribe to our channel, all those good things. But I think we're about to head in. So step right up, let's go for this ride. Railroad Museum of Long Island. Welcome, museum hours, Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Cool, we're in between that time. Now it's just a matter of finding an entrance. Nope, that's not the entrance door. That's not an entrance. I hear voices, that's a good sign. This is great, Jaws number three. An ex Long Island Railroad wedge snow plow WA3 Jaws, one of the many tools used by the railroad for snow fighting operation, was the wedge snow plow. The plow is pushed ahead of one or more steam and later diesel locomotives at speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. Its colorful and imaginative paint scheme was applied by Long Island Railroad employees while it was still in service. For obvious reasons, it also gained the nickname Jaws. Jaws is the only Long Island Railroad wedge snow plow in existence. It was retired by the Long Island Railroad and subsequently acquired by this museum. And we can see why it's named as Jaws. Look at that. I love how the two windows sort of look like eyes on it. That's cool. The old turntable was a Boy Scout Eagle Project restoring it. Eagle Scout Project 2006 by Anthony Breeze. Troop 51 in Greenport. You come in, it looks like the old train ticket window. And I love that we're actually in an old train station. I mean, Edward has insulators. How can you go wrong? Ooh, this you never see. You don't ever see the insulators on the hinge that would hold them. Cute little museum. But I love railroads from passenger to freight. So I knew this was a museum for me to see. This, uh it's Greenport in 1950. We chose them because they still had steam locomotives. We are in that building there. That was the freight depot. This is the end of the main line. It was finished in 1844. We take people to that dock, put them on a steamboat, and then on a, on a trip to Stonington, Connecticut, where they got other trains all the way to Boston. They were sure they were never ever going to build train tracks along the Connecticut Shore. <laughs> because in 1844 they don't even have steel, then they need to build hundreds of bridges here because there are rivers and streams all over the place. Mm -hmm. And they needed to be drawbridges because they needed to get tall sailboats up and down. Them. So they just wrung their hands and said, hey, it's so cheap right down the middle of Long Island. No rivers, no streams, all sand. Mm -hmm. They already had tracks to Hicksville in 1837, so they just tied on there and came out here to, to Greenport. Uh, it lasted five years, <laughs> and then they built the New Haven Railroad. <laughs> and they, they figured out how to use wood to make drawbridges. Yeah. So all the vineyards, mm -hmm. they only came in, in the mid-1970s. We went from having two of them to now having over 20. Uh, and we still have people growing pumpkins. The season is coming up and corn and all sorts of other things. Now this is a condensed version because we wanted to get our, our place in Riverhead in on this diorama. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's, this is Manduck on one side and that's South Old on the other side. It's okay. pushed again. But in our Riverhead place we have this ride from the World's Fair in 1964, the Long Island Railroad uh, exhibit. Very cool. The, the, the tops of the cars are actually open and kids sit in there. And they we also have the, the, uh, the giant Lionel train layout from the Lionel factory in Michigan, oh, very which cool. closed a while back. And this is uh, Riverhead. This is the train station. This is the Polish Hall. I don't know if you've ever been to a, a, a three-day Polish wedding there. <laughs> Using 
all the cars. Yes. No water clothes anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you gotta bring your own water. Mm -hmm. And those rattan seats. Mm -hmm. They had those in subways, trolley cars. Love seeing the lines. So we're right there. End of the line, Greenport. There is two of these museums. We're at the Greenport. There is another one in Riverhead, which that'll wait for another day, though. Imagine being the switch operator. Control signals. Always was fascinated by the rails. I wish I could travel back in the style. All the luxuries of modern trains travel are yours to enjoy when you go. UP Domliners, Union Pacific Railroad, 1969. I never traveled on a train car that looks like that. Cool stuff like signs from Ozone Park, American, Telephone and Telegraph. What? On, do not touch. Oh, I won't. And I won't pass. Stop. It looks like there's more office stuff. We got them. Um Two of these are, are working in a sense. Mm -hmm. They're not changing any switches from anybody. But this is uh, the original equipment from Bliss Interlocking, which was in Long Island City. Okay. Uh, this switch here sets that signal over there. Oh, that's cool. Oh, very yeah, cool. And, and big kids. <laughs> <laughs> this one is more complicated. It sets the signal that's in the, in the rafters up there. See it moving? All right, I oh, see it. Is the other switch changes that signal right up near the light? You can see the signal changing. Boost number fourteen. You can go in. Awesome. This is our nineteen twenty-seven caboose. It's the last of the wooden-topped cabooses. Uh, from then on in, they built them with steel tops. The caboose is the living and the working quarters for the freight train crew. And as such, it's the world's first RV. Mm -hmm. They lived here, they worked here, they did whatever they had to do here. They have their bunk room over here. And how many days would they be on and off? Well, they'd be on for 10 hours a day. And um, they didn't always stay overnight because yeah. not every run was all the way out yeah. to Long Island. If they were only going halfway out, they would just turn around and go back. So they didn't always sleep. Mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. but, but if they did come out here, their union eventually got them that they that the railroad would pay for them to stay in a hotel. But what they did at that time was take the money, money and stay, stay in the train. <laughs> right. Yeah. Now they also, like all good RVs, they have a potty. And of course, nobody had refrigerant. They don't have any electric back here anyway in 1927. So they had to use what everybody used in those days, which is the Italian word for refrigerator, which is isobox. <laughs> so they had a big chunk of ice went in there in Jamaica, and they kept the ice about that far away from the back wall, and the big tall bottles of beer, which they used in the 30s and 40s, would sit behind there. Mm -hmm. But the inspector who was probably blind anyway. He couldn't see. Yeah, because it was behind the ice. Yeah. It's, not, it's not there, is it up here? <laughs> In those days, um, the uh, the railroad's business was delivering cars and taking them away from uh, businesses and, and warehouses and things that were all built along the tracks. We have to realize that all freight and all stuff came by train until the 1970s and yeah. when there were the big roads built. Uh, so. Uh, they had to drop off cars uh, and pick up cars. So the conductor had set up his train in the yard before he left so that the first car in front of him was the first car to be dropped off. It's like a mailman puts all his mail in order. Yeah. Now when they were running, they had uh, three other jobs to do. One was they had to sit up here in the cupola. Anybody want to go up there? You Sure. In your brain. Uh, if you're right-handed, left-handed. Well, you got it all figured. You're off <laughs> because that side. Well, Except for my head. I should say, watch your head, but that's one thing you can't do because your eyes. I see you've already bumped it a couple of times. So, uh, so uh, they had to sit up here and they had to look over the, 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 the freight cars ahead of them and look for what they call hot boxes, which are burning wheel bearings. The wheel bearings were 
lubricated in the most scientific way they could think of in the late 1920s. This was up until the 1970s uh, with oily rags and they frequently caught on fire. Oh, they wow. re-oiled them every time they had an opportunity, every time they hit a yard or something, but sometimes a certain car would get skipped or whatever. So, uh, so that was job number one. Job number two was they had to mine the air brake pressure at the end of the train yeah. that was right over the con <laughs> The conductor had that air brake pressure meter at the end of the train. Uh, if the, he knows what the engineer is putting 60, 70 pounds of air out, and if he's got two, he knows he's got a big leak somewhere, mm -hmm. or a couple of leaks. So they had to go out, stop the train again, go out and listen for the sss, and try to find it. And because it, there's a rotten old hose connecting each of the cars, if they got 50 cars. The third thing they have to do is at the end of the caboose, and the caboose could go either way, so it's, it's mounted on brackets, and it, it has to be placed at the end that's going to be the end of the train. Mm -hmm. They don't have the light bait built into the, into yeah. the train. Uh, well, that had to be a red light, kerosene powered. Uh, we have red lights on the back of our cars today because trains which were built long before cars had red lights. So the oh, other trains have got great mm -hmm. lights, we put a red light on. They did their own cooking. Uh, somebody was elected to be the cook uh, and uh, they ate anything they could steal, run over, shoot or catch uh, in their trip. They had mm -hmm. a fishing pole and a shotgun in their cabinets. And now today they no longer require cabooses, uh, but they replaced cabooses with this gentleman here. This is Fred, the flashing rear end device. He has a light that's battery powered. The new ones have a charging thing here, solar powered, so they never have to be charged up. And, uh, and so that replaces those lanterns. Mm -hmm. You plug the last train, the last car's air brake line into here, this thing reads the air brake pressure, which is that job, and radios it back to the locomotive. The actual plow came off of a, of a wooden plow okay. uh, that the railroad had, which the rest of it was wrecked, but they, the railroad never throws anything out. And they had an old caboose that was in a wreck, mm -hmm. so they welded those all together and made this. It has no power in it. It would be pushed, pushed by one, them. two, or three locomotives, depending on wow. the road. In these days, like I said, everything came by train. Yeah. So if they didn't run, you didn't have any milk, you didn't have any mail, you didn't have a lot, so mm -hmm. they had to run. Today, well, we sit it in the yard and you'll get it tomorrow or the next day. Yeah, for the freight. I love when you pass through Jamaica and it's really snowing and they light the tracks on fire. Yeah, oh, so that's for the switches. Yeah. They, they switch heaters because they, they jam up. It's just, it's weird when you look yeah. out into the, the nothingness fire, and you right. see the yeah. fire. Yes, yes. There's actually gas lines in there. There's this ticket here. It's punched out for July 3rd, 1919. It was issued at Yapak, which was came up in which was uh, a military base. Uh, and everybody in World War I and World War II who went into the army and then out of it had to go through there. Mm. Yeah, I remember those tickets. Oh my gosh. Oh, some of the old time. The, the bigger, fatter. This was the uh, freight office. And I, uh, I don't want to take it out now because it's, it's from 1890s. The ledger. There. And that's the record of all the stuff. For kids' groups, I take it out and I see if they can read the print. There's a uh, there's a pail of butter and there's a chicken in a box. And, and over here is a coffin, o only it says casket. Because everything came by train. Yeah. And this guy who wrote this all down, which is beautiful handwriting, uh, this was the, the freight clerk was the lowest job on the railroad. It was a job like schlocking hamburgers at McDonald's. From the World's Fair, the place setting. I never sat on a train you right ate from food like that. I love this one, especially when you realize it's screwed over, but that probably was an ashtray. Imagine not just for airplanes, for trains too. I love museums like this, especially the guy showing us around is awesome. I love knowledgeable people that just teach us as we're going. Louis Casey Jones, fireman. I love the route 
of the dashing commuter. I have a patch of that at home. Imagine mailing a box like that, just writing the address and the name on the box like it's an envelope. Wow, all the old stamps. One please to Penn Station, off peak. No? Joy, where do you want to go? I got a few bucks, and we got the train to take us anywhere. On Long Island, that is. Remember, kids, never play on the third rail. It's, it's a life hack, or a train hack. It's crazy. Please purchase tickets at ticket office before boarding trains. When tickets office is open, fares paid on trains are higher. I remember that. I remember if you didn't and you'd have to pay on the train, it was cash only. Now everyone has tickets on their phones, paying with credit cards. Technology, it's nuts. And good merch, I was learning about the number 39. It was one of those two steam engines. Just left, I think it's funny. It's sad people are throwing trash down next to the trains. But when you notice that, a bunch of that trash is all the old oyster shells. <laughs> Because we are out on Long Island. Long Island. Getting ready to head out, but only one more thing. We're going to walk over and take a look at that old turntable. Because it's not something you see every day. Just imagine to change the direction of the engine. It would have to go on, almost like a record turntable, turn around to go the other way. End of the lines. You got to do what you got to do. Here it is, the old turntable. Shame it doesn't have a the tracks anymore where they'd have to go on. Right now, if a train tried to drive on this, we'd have some problems. I don't know if those gears go to it, but it looks cool and looks like it might. If any of you Boy Scouts are on Long Island and looking for an Eagle Scout project, it's many years ago that the other Eagle Scout cleaned it out, got rid of trees. They need someone to come out and help do that again. Good Eagle project. Village of Greenport. And there it is, the museum with the caboose, good old Jaws, and what a freight car. And this used to be the old Greenport Freight Station. Did you like it, Joy? I enjoyed it. I love museums where the guy takes you around and really shows to you. And they're all volunteers that work. This It's their passion, so they like to show it off, which I always like. So I think we could call it. I think so. The Railroad Museum of Long Island. Been Never there, done, done that. that. Remember, folks, safe travels. Good eats. And live life. I be working on the railroad all the live long days. That's the only words of the song I know. And I'll pass my time away. And it's also cool that this still is the Long Island Railroad's train station to Greenport. Tracks come right through. I was hoping we'd get that train, but I know this train only runs a few times a day and uh we ain't waiting a few hours just to get that shot. I will though for you. Or I just hide my camera in the bush and come back later tonight. But we need you, camera. Let's go. Get out of here, camera.